My name is Rebecca D. Winter Schmidt, and I'm the Associate Director of the Investor Alliance for Human Rights, which is an initiative of the Interface Center on Corporate Responsibility. We work with a group of investors who are very concerned about investing responsibly and sustainably, um, what's commonly referred to as environmental, social, and governance investing, ESG investing. What we're seeing is that investors are increasingly investing in areas where private security risks might be prevalent. For example, think about um, the just transition. We have a lot of sustainable investors who are concerned about investing in a post-carbon economy, and that, of course, to get to that economy is going to require the use of transition minerals. And unfortunately, a lot of those minerals are located in places that are very unstable and where private security may be, need to be used. And so in this case, I think um, a lot of the investors are first now uncovering this as being an important issue that they're going to have to face as part of trying to invest in that just transition. Furthermore, you know, a number of our investors are uh, investing companies who, for various reasons, uh, their business activities touch upon conflict-affected and high-risk areas. We also see a number of those companies having to utilize private security services. So I think in many ways, while investors are becoming more aware of this risk around their portfolio oil companies utilizing private security in a way that could potentially negatively impact on human rights. I think that there is not yet a kind of full realization of the extent that their portfolio companies might be utilizing private security. But really we see private security being used in almost every sector and in, in, in many different types of geographies, um, both stable and in complex types of environments. So I think with this investor ESG guide, it serves two purposes. It serves the purpose first of educating our investors about the fact that security is kind of that hidden S in the ESG that they may not yet be familiar with and they need to get their heads wrapped around in order to effectively address those risks, um, but then also to really provide investors with the tools that they need to engage with their portfolio companies that either directly use security or you know, security is being used somewhere deeper in that supply chain. So what the guide does is it provides investors with um, action items, things that they can do when engaging with those companies. And it helps investors really think through that entire investment life cycle to think about, okay, what can I do, for example, in that early on when I'm selecting which companies should I invest in? How am I communicating effectively my expectation that if those companies utilize security, they do so in a responsible fashion, for example, by ensuring that those companies are members of the International Code of Conduct Association? Or when it comes to you know, selecting companies, trying to understand better what systems they have in place to effectively um, manage their uh, security-related risks. Once they've invested in a company, to encourage our investors to um, engage with those companies if there are, for example, security-related incidents, to try to gain a good understanding of whether or not they have systems in place to effectively address those incidents. And so it's really kind of empowering our investors to think through that entire investment life cycle. Where can they step in and utilize their leverage as shareholders in a company to push those companies to more responsibly utilize private security providers? I think another way in which investors will become more aware of the need to address the security-related risks in their investment portfolios is through some of the legislative developments that we see happening. So for example, in the European space, we have the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive. And one potential provision that might be included in that directive is a provision around the need to do heightened human rights due diligence for investment activities that touch upon conflict-affected or post-conflict areas. And so in these situations, um, you'll often see companies that are in those types of environments having to utilize private security. So it will become very relevant for investors who need to do their own due diligence, but also do due diligence on the companies they own shares in to push those companies to think about how are you effectively addressing those risks linked to your use of private security. So I think those kind of regulatory developments will also be a big driver. One of the reasons investors care increasingly about the issue of how private security is utilized by their portfolio companies is because we see growing acceptance of the notion of what's called double materiality. And what that means is that it's basically not enough for investors to be solely concerned about the financial viability and profitability of their investments, but they also need to think about how their investment activities are directly impacting upon people and the environment. And because of this double materiality, we see investors having to look then to understand how their investments in companies are potentially having unintended negative human rights and environmental consequences. And I think it's really kind of driving matters um, and pushing the envelope to get investors to think more consequentially about that S in the environmental, social, and governance, and to think about the S as being 
human rights writ large and certainly human rights across all three pillars, but then also one element of those human rights being the right to ensure that your rights aren't being infringed upon by private security providers. And I think that's really helping to push the envelope.